хотите смотреть наши видео на русском, вы можете смотреть их в Яндекс браузере на русском языке, там есть дубляж. So there's several of these buildings. Uh, one behind the filming location. I should not have said that. Restart it. It works great, just like this bad take. What do I do when I'm on campus and I have downtime? Um, I uh, write. <laughs> I didn't like it either. Um, hopefully, uh, this video has uh, made up for me uh, for my last appearance and my only appearance in which I was. I seemed like kind of a rude person. Uh, hopefully. Uh, this makes up for that. All right, you use the buttons. Hello again and welcome to Expat American. I am the Expat American here with a Russian university student standing in the cold outside another Russian university. And today we want to compare Russian higher education to higher education in your city. This young man has attended institutions, educational institutions in both America and now in Russia. We're going to walk around the campus and talk with him and answer specific questions to help us decide what university is like in Russia compared to university life and higher education in the West. Baumanska University, give us a little background about this place and also how would you compare it to the West and like what would be another university or universities that this would be like for other people to get an idea? Right, so the official name of the university is the Baumanska Moscow State Technical University, BMSTU. Uh, I think uh, the best comparison would probably be Here's considered like an Ivy League school uh, in Moscow. So a good comparison would be, I guess, something like MIT or Caltech. Some of the faculties have their own buildings, and right now we're at the, uh, it's called Special Mechanical Engineering Building, and uh, in, uh, a few years, I'll probably be spending every day here uh, as in the higher courses when things get more specialized, this is the building where people go to. Of course, campus has uh, the same sort of buildings for uh, other faculties. Alex, how much does this place cost and how would that compare to Western universities? Right, so I think uh, first, you have to look at costs in, uh, for example, in America, because that's what I'm most familiar with, uh, because I was looking to apply to some of those a few years ago before I decided that I wanted to apply here. Um, so in the U.S., for in-state tuition, you would be looking at something around $15,000, and out-of-state would be something like $40,000 uh, for a, a a good university uh, per, for year. per year yes yeah. um, for example something like the University of Florida uh, and I'm just doing tech universities because this is the field I'm studying 
Um, there's also Texas A&M. Both of those are about 15000 for in-state per year and uh, $40,000 for out-of-state. Uh, if you're looking at some of the Ivy League schools, for example, again, Georgia Tech, MIT, Caltech, uh, not all those are Ivy League, but some of the uh, more well-known uh, tech universities with good reputations, that would be something like $60,000 per year. Um, in Russia, the prices are uh, much, much less, I would say. Um, first of all, in, in the U.S., it's considered normal. It's the norm to uh, take out uh, a student loan and then pay back, you know, later when you have a job and a career. Um, so it's, it's nothing weird. It's, it's not weird to do something like that. In Russia, people aren't quite ready to... Uh, pay that much money for an education, and that was—that is why the government is uh, willing to pay for most Russian citizens to get their education. Um, but if you're not able to get a free spot, uh, which I'll talk about later when we talk about admissions, um, then uh, you can pay uh, for your education, and it's usually something like around so from. It's in the range of 200,000 to 700,000 rubles, which is about five to ten thousand dollars per year, uh, which is, and the ten thousand dollars at the very high end. Uh, so you're you're going to be paying much less uh, here or in tuition than uh, in the U.S., considering that you also have the opportunity to get a free spot, which most people do get. Entrance exams and the whole admissions process. How does that work in Russia? As far as I know, in America, there are some tests that people have to take that they're afraid they might not pass, like the SAT and things like that. So, go ahead, shoot. Right. Um, so, in Russia, uh, if you're a Russian citizen applying to a university in Russia, then something you have to do uh, before to, to graduate high school is to take uh, the standardized exams um, that Russian schools provide uh, and what you have to take to graduate is the Russian language math and I think that's pretty much it. Uh, you can pick other ones depending on what university you want to get into and what exams they require. Uh, other options are physics, chemistry, history, literature, uh, basically any subject you can think of. They'll have an exam on it uh, and you'll take it if your university requires it for admissions. Uh, but if you're an international student, you'll probably be taking the exams that your university provides uh, because you, you won't be allowed to take the ones that, the, the general ones. Uh, so this is, it's actually interesting because in the U.S., when you apply, the university looks at everything. They look at your GPA, your letter that you write, uh, what clubs you were in, uh, your volunteer hours. Uh, in Russia, it's not like this. Uh, the only thing they will look at is uh, your scores on those exams that you take, um, which is interesting. Uh, a little bit disappointing for me because... Uh, I was really trying to get a good GPA in high school, and I did, and when, when I moved here, it turned out that it was useless. They don't look at it, they don't consider it, um, so they only go by those entrance exams. Alright, so uh, now we've magically teleported to my building that I go to. And uh, I have my hood on and my hands are in my pockets because it's actually 11 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Very cold and my face is barely moving. Everything is freezing. This is why my facial expressions may look strange. Anyway, this guy right here, this is the statue of Karolyov, who is a famous uh, Soviet uh, engineer who 
is famous for his work during the space race. Uh, he did, made a lot of advancements uh, for the Soviet Union in the space area. So I can see there's rockets and stuff flying around him. Uh, but this is the building that I go to every day right now, and every student of my university, of Allen State, Bowens Moscow State Technical University, goes to for their first two years, uh, no matter what uh, degree they're getting. Uh, this is where they teach, teach the general subjects, uh, the, your calculus, uh, physics, uh, statistics, uh, this is stuff before you get into your specialized fields. Um, now, speaking of the programs, there in the U.S., there's pretty much, when you start, the bachelor's degree is the thing you would get, and that's a four-year degree. In Russia, they have, since the Soviet Union, they had something like called the specialist degree, which takes six years uh, to finish. Uh, this is the degree that I'm on right now, the program, it's a six-year program, and they also have the more Western version of, uh, you know, you get your bachelor's, and then you get your master's, and then your doctor's. Uh, but I decided to do the six-year degree, that's what I was recommended to do, but they do also offer four-year bachelor's degrees. Behind me is one of my university's dormitories, the building with the little pink light in it and one of the windows, and the building below it uh, manages the living situation of our university. Now, there are several of these buildings, and they're located not just here where the university is, but a few stops away as well. Uh, so how you get into one of those dormitories, no, not everybody gets in. So again, your test results, your test scores for the standardized testing has to be high enough. Some people get into the universe, uh, into the sorry dormitories, and uh, they pay something like thirty dollars a month, which is basically free. Uh, but not everybody gets in. Uh, now, for international students, basically everybody gets in. You don't really have to take any tests or anything, because uh, they assume that you, you don't live in Moscow, you don't have a place to stay, so you get a place in the dorms. Tell us, what is a day in the life of a university student here, or perhaps a day in, or a week in the life of a university student here? Right, so um, my schedule, uh, I, I have a day off my first year is Tuesday, uh, other than the weekends. Um, but I do also have university on Saturday, well I did for a short period of time. But that's not uh, something unusual to have school on Saturday. My university is closed on Sundays. There's no class uh, on Sundays. Uh, but it looks like how, how my normal day would look like is I get to class. There's usually uh, I take the metro to get to this building right behind me, um, and uh, there's two types of class pretty much. There's a lecture or a seminar. During a lecture, you sit in a lecture hall uh, with about a hundred other people, and you're explaining a subject. Uh, and in a seminar, you're in a smaller classroom with just the people in your group, um, and you're doing work on a board and, ask, and answering questions that are asked by uh, your professor. Um, so my, my classes right now, uh, that I have are calculus, analytical geometry, descriptive geometry, engineering, graphics, uh, and th those are the main tech ones. Of course, I've got computer science as well. Uh, then I also, unfortunately, have to take culturology, history, and English. English, of course, wasn't a problem. Uh, culturology and history are not subjects I like very much, but uh, I have to put up with them. Um, so, I, I, like I said, I happen to have Tuesday off uh, every week, and uh, on Saturdays I had uh, basically lab work, but it wasn't exactly lab work. Uh, we were learning to use industrial machines, because in, in an engineering field, when you're designing a part and drawing up a blueprint, you can't design something that they're not going to be able to make. 
So during the first semester, every Saturday we would work with the more industrial side of things with our hands, see what the machines are capable of so we don't, for example, design a part that the machines physically can't make. Tell us about homework. What's the homework load like? So actually the majority of the work I do is, is homework. Uh, I would say 20% of the work is done in class and 80 is homework. Um, that includes preparing for exams, turning in assignments, uh, uh, as far as homework. Uh, and uh, the majority of the homework I do that takes, most, takes up most of the time is actually the sketching and drawing the blueprints part. Uh, something special that my university does is actually uh, use uh, paper uh, to do their blueprints. Other universities in Russia uh, have gotten past this uh, for better or for worse and they've, they do computer graphics. Of course I'll also go to computer graphics um, next semester but for the first semester everything is done on paper. Uh, this is something that the university has decided to preserve since Soviet times. So Alex, it is really cold and I want to go where you like to eat when you're on campus. Right, so there's several options for that. Of course you have the uh, Russian version of McDonald's. It's not called McDonald's, but nobody cares. All my classmates still call it McDonald's because that's what it is. Uh, and uh, there's many places that sell sell shawarma here uh, and they're all on one street which we'll take a walk down later but my favorite place here is Nagoya I think they have it in the US but I've never been there it's a Japanese restaurant I like to go there because it's affordable and it has really good curry again everyone as you know we do not want the length of our life to be cut short in the previous video I told you about a unique product called Synthesit which is available not only in Europe and the USA but in Russia too Synthesit increases the number of healthy stem cells of which I discussed in the previous video it also restores blood fluidity at an amazing rate take a look on the left we have human blood before taking Synthesit as you can see Erythrocytes, red blood cells, which transport oxygen, are all stuck together, so it will make it hard to transport oxygen to the organs and tissues. On the right side, we can see Synthesit changes the red blood cells. The blood can freely penetrate into the capillaries, and these changes happen just in an hour. There is no product in the world that can possibly enhance the blood. Thick blood causes many diseases, from high blood pressure to strokes and heart attacks. You can take a blood test and the probability of you having thick blood is 90%. This will lead to a lack of energy and low immunity. But if you take Synthesit, your blood will be in perfect condition. You will get a lot of energy and your health will greatly improve day after day. Say goodbye to energy drinks. And of course, Synthesit saves you a great deal since you won't have to pay thousands of dollars or euros on medical expenses. Synthesit makes you healthier every day. You can find all the links in the description of this video. Make sure to check out the official Synthesit website in Europe, Switzerland, and the USA. To make your first order, the product will be delivered right to your doorstep. Take this unique product and stay healthy. So Alex paid at the automated machine there and he got a receipt and they'll come by when the food's ready from the kitchen and they'll find our table number and our receipt and give us our food. I noticed that at American universities they offer a lot of extracurricular things for the kids to do, the kids, the students, like video game room pool hall, swimming pool, and they're trying to attract American students to go to their American university with cool things so that they'll beg mom and dad for money to go to the school. Um, and I get the impression Russia doesn't have anything like that. That's correct. Russia 
uh, my university specifically doesn't offer uh, many extracurricular extracurricular things. Um, they do have sports, uh, they're normal sports teams, and they have different clubs, but I wouldn't say they advertise them like they would in the U.S., uh, and they're all uh, related to education. So if you're studying a, an engineering program, there might be some sort of uh, thing where you build a car or something, and you race it against other people, and the winner gets something. Um, but that's extracurricular, but it's still within, still connected to your subject that you're studying. Um, yes, but there, there's also teams uh, that you can join uh, as far as sports. Uh, there would be soccer, um, hockey, basketball, uh, basically everything you would have in the U.S. except for uh, American football. They don't really have that here. And uh, in the U.S. No baseball either, right? You, that's right, no baseball either. And um, in the U.S., you. they would... Uh, the, the, if you're on a team uh, for your university, it's kind of a big deal. Because, for example, they have the National College Football League. Um, and uh, here they don't have that. So if you're on a team for your university... It doesn't mean much, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, in the American system, the sports team for the university brings in a lot of money for that university. So it's an important business aspect of the university system in America. So they don't have anything like that over here. Well, most of the universities here are uh, public, which means they're paid for mostly by the government, um, with, by taxes, basically. Uh, so they're not looking to advertise to make money. Uh, but if you want to play on a team, you can do that. But it's not uh, financially beneficial uh, to the university. What do we got here? Looks like some yummy food that Josiah wishes he was here to eat. Yes, uh, so some, this is a Japanese restaurant. They offer curry, which we didn't get this time, but uh, we got uh, two boxes of noodles with uh, curry sauce, and I think they have some meat in them. Uh, these were both about 350 rubles, which would be, uh, what, like six US dollars? I don't know, I look it up uh, uh, and then I type right. it on the screen later. Yes, it would be something <laughs> like uh, five to six dollars, and then, uh, or the, which is fine for this kind of meal, but um, for the beer that Joe got, it was also that price, which is quite a bit for, for Russia. They, they usually, 100 rubles is the norm, his was 350. So, uh, the food here is average priced, and uh, the drinks are, are quite expensive. So, 1,300 rubles total for yes. two food items, your weird red drink, and my beer. Yeah. Cool. What is your weird drink? I'm not sure. It's some Japanese lemonade. What are the job prospects that you will have and that a student will have um, after graduating from the university system in Moscow? So, uh, as far as job prospects, uh, one thing that universities do offer uh, is called Sinevoya uh, Obuchenian, which means that uh, you can actually, before you start university, you can sign a contract with a company. It's usually uh, all the time here. It's a Russian company uh, who will pay for your education and then set you up with a job in their company and you'll work for them for three years at least. That's part of the contract. And then you can choose if you want to stay with them or not. But you will, an option is to have your education paid for by a company and then uh, work with them uh, for another three years, which is going to give you a job and three years of work experience. Uh, so that is some of the job prospects.
This is the college bathroom at Alex's restaurant. So we're going to end our video on a restaurant road, a little tiny city walk on the campus that people like to eat at, which is not where we ate because Alex wanted something different. And it's actually near the metro, um, which makes it convenient for students who are not in the dorms to come and go to the university just on the Moscow metro system. Stay with me. All right, so here we are saying goodbye on the whoa. Am I still green? Yeah, I am. Ugh, snow in my hair. Alrighty, so here's the end of our university video, our higher education video, higher learning video in Moscow, Russia. What do you think? How does it compare to your city and the university system where you're from? Click like, subscribe, ring the bell notification. You like that, don't you? Click the box to see what happens next. Also, one other thing I want to mention, I wrote on the screen before, but we are on VK. If we're not putting out enough videos for you and you want to see some photos of us, you can go there, um, look up the name Joseph Rose, my name, and uh, see what you can find. It should be about a year's worth of us in Moscow.